binomial distributions. We'll start off by reading the question. Each evening, Aaron sets his alarm for 7am. He believes that the probability that he wakes before the alarm rings each morning is 0.4 and is independent from morning to morning. We've got a probability distribution here. So the first thing we need to do is to try and write that distribution down. We've got seven mornings and our probabilities are how many of those mornings he wakes before his alarm. So it's discrete. It's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7. So it's discrete. It's not continuous. So the first thing we do is we write our x, which is a discrete random variable, is distributed. And with discrete random variables, we'll be looking at a binomial distribution. And we can see this from the rest of the question. We only have two outcomes, success or failure. And we have seven days of the week. So n, our number of trials, is seven. And our probability of success is 0.4. That's the probability that he wakes before his alarm. So there's our distribution. Discrete random variable x is distributed binomially with n equal to 7 and p equal to 0.4. We're looking for the probability that he wakes before his alarm on two or fewer mornings. In other words, less than or equal to 2, not 1 or 2 mornings. So write down what we're looking for, the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. To find this, we can use the tables in the formula booklet, or we can use the calculator. To use the tables, we simply go to the n equals 7 in the binomial distribution tables. So find the n equals 7 table, and then look under x is less than or equal to 2 with a probability of 0.4. And to do that, we would, if we do that, we will get our solution. Remember, it's cumulative, so it gives us x is less than or equal to 2. To use the calculator, we go into stat mode. We go into distribution. The distribution option F5. It's then binomial. And then under binomial, it's the B, C, D. It's the cumulative one that we look at. We enter N equals 7, or num trials is 7. P equals 0.4. And X equals 2. And that should give us the answer, which is 0 0.420 to three significant figures. For the next part of the question, we want the probability that he wakes before his alarm rings on more than one, but fewer than five mornings. Well, if it was just fewer than five mornings, that would mean four or less, wouldn't it? So we want the probability that x is less than or equal to four. And that would just give us fewer than five mornings. But we don't want one or zero. It has to be more than one. So we need to subtract the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. Always write this down. And now we can use the same method as we did with the previous part of the question with part 1. To look up x is less than or equal to 4 and x is less than or equal to 1. 
And we can either look it up on the tables again or again use the calculator in a similar way as we did before. And you should get the answer 0 0.904 for that part and 0.159 for that part, which equals 0.745. OK, moving on to part B. We're now looking at the probability that during a four week period, he wakes before his alarm rings on exactly seven mornings. Well, there's all sorts of different ways that he could wake on exactly seven mornings. It could be the first seven mornings. It could be the last seven. It could be the first, third, fifth, etc. Lots of different ways. We have a way of working out how many different ways he can wake on seven mornings out of 28. 28C7. It's using this, which we can look up on the calculator. If he wakes, on exactly seven mornings, the probability for each of those mornings is 0 0.4. It will be 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 seven times, so 0 0.4 to the power of seven. That means for the remaining 21 mornings, the probability is 0 0.6. That's the probability that he doesn't wait before the alarm. And that's what we're trying to solve. The general formula is n c x times this is our probability of success to the power of x times our probability of failure which is 1 minus p to the power of n minus x so that's the general formula in our case our n is 28 our x is 7, p is 0.4, x7 there. 1 minus p is 1 minus 0.4, which is 0.6. And then our n, 28 minus 7, gives us 21 there. And if we calculate this, we get 0.426. ncx on the calculator we press the OPTN for option. We then have to find the probability menu. And to do that, we look at the first menu and it's not there. So we press F6, which takes us on to another menu. And then it's probability. What we then do is we put our N number in first. So we type in 28. We then press the button. It's actually written as NCR because it's a number of ways of arranging our objects out of N, but in our case it's NCX. So we press that NCR button and then we press the 7. And then if you press equals or execute, you will get ways of arranging 7 objects out of 28. OK, finally then, we move on to part C. Assuming Aaron's belief is correct, calculate the values for the mean and standard deviation of the number of mornings in a week when Aaron wakes before his alarm rings. Well, the mean is the expected value, if you like. And to work that out, we simply multiply n times p. In other words, the number of mornings times the probability of success each morning will give you the number of mornings that we would expect him to wake on average. So in our instance here, in our example, it will be 
for the seven mornings of the week. So the number of trials in a week is obviously seven times the probability of success 0.4, which equals 2.8. So the mean is 2.8. The standard deviation, well, we work out the variance by multiplying n times p times 1 minus p. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance, so we simply square root that. So again, in our example, that gives us a square root of 7 times 0.4 times 0.6 which equals well we already know that 7 times 0.4 is 2.8 2.8 times 0.6 gives us 1.68 and then if we square root that we get 1.30 again to 3 significant figures. OK, we'll have a quick look at how that looks on the mark scheme now so we can see what you need to write. But if you follow what I've written here, all of the important information is on the sheet. OK, so let's have a look at the mark scheme. If you write the distribution now, as we did, you will always make sure you get this method mark here. So that's how I suggest that you deal with this part. You write the discrete random variable x is distributed binomially with an n value of 7 and a p value of 0.4. Always write this bit out, but this is just a b mark here. So all you need is the right answer and it's anything that falls within 0.419 to 0.421 and we got the answer 0.420 didn't we so we're fine with that you'll see these method marks here for the next part do require the writing out of the probability that x is less than or equal to 4 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1 so write that part out to make sure you get the method marks and the following answer mark for the answer mark, you need anything that falls within 0.744 to 0.746. And again, we got 0.745, so that's absolutely fine. For the next part, the method mark comes from writing out this formula. So you can see here, understanding the formula, getting its correct with the numbers we were dealing with our n as 28 our x as 7 p as 0.4 and then putting the x in there and 1 minus p as 0.6 and putting the n minus x bit in there and again anything that falls within these two values here and we got 0.426 for the final part of the question n times p equals 2.8 it's just a b mark so you just need the correct answer for that and similarly just a b mark for this part so all you needed was the correct answer anything that falls within 1.29 and 1.31 we got 1.30